Hello, everybody, and welcome back to The Advisor with Stacey Chalemi. And today I'm very excited because we have our very special guest. It's Scott Adams from Scott Adams Consultant. And he is a part of our podcast community, and he has his own podcast on our channel. So I want you to go check him out. He has great advice for both startups and for corporations, and you'll get a lot out of his podcast. Today, he's going to surprise us. He has some topics that he wants to talk about that both startups and corporations need, and also the corporations especially need this the most. So he's going to tell you a little about that in a moment. But before we begin, Scott, do you want to just tell everybody a little about yourself for people who haven't um, heard from you in the past? Yeah, thank you, Stacey. It's uh Honored to be on the show again and love our conversations as always. Um, I'm Scott Adams. I work as a consultant in the healthcare, wellness, and sports space, primarily helping companies that are growing and scaling, but the companies that are introducing technology into those spaces. So I have a background of over 20 years in healthcare and specifically helping to grow and scale healthcare companies and sports companies. I love it. I love it. Now, today you have something very special for us. Can you tell us a little about what you wanted to discuss today? Yeah, it's as you know, it's an important time of the year, as always, to make sure things get strategically in line in what you're doing. And that's part of the kind of the growing phase of companies, whether it's a scale up or a longstanding corporation, right? They all have their challenges. And the great part about the space that I work in is being involved in technology is mm -hmm. we know how much technology can help. Yeah. Um, but we also know, as you could probably tell by looking at your phone and the amount of apps that continue to grow on someone's phone, this is a problem because it continues to grow as there's more and more tools. So right. I really want to talk about today um, what your company is using for those tools and specifically just a thought process on how to make sure things are good and aligned moving forward in the future. I think that's an excellent topic to talk about. You know, there's so many softwares out there. There's so many apps out there. And, you know, there's so many claims. This one will do that one. That one will do this one. And like you said, it, it, before you know it, you have a ton of apps on your phone. You're doing a ton of stuff. And, you know, it gets confusing after a while. It gets overwhelming. And, you know, sometimes like, you know, you you, you devote a lot of time into these um, software apps. And, you know, sometimes these, these software apps can lock you in too, where you spend all this time it's not so easy to get out of them now. And you invest all this time and you might not be too happy with them. So you really have to be careful before you sign up for these apps and all these different software technologies, which ones are the best and which ones are going to be the most beneficial for your company, I would think. Yeah, it's important to look at it holistically. Um, and we'll talk about a few of those specific things as we go along. Uh, I think the one thing, and I, that's a great example to lead us into the first part, is I was having a conversation with a very good friend of mine the other day. Now, she works in, I would say, let's just call it a large corporate company that does manufacturing, okay? We were discussing kind of what tools and communication goes down and she was having frustration and, and I've been a part of large companies as well. So I fully understand the same frustration, but I'm just gonna read you kind of the list of tech stack they have. And again, there's some specifics and some nots, but this is how th this company communicates, stores and shares information and gets work done on a day-to-day. -day. So here's the list of things that she was dealing with. So within the same company, she has three different emails, mm -hmm. one for co different entities and one for parent company. Within that, they use Teams to communicate back and forth and share files, mm -hmm. Slack to communicate back and forth to share files. A traditional telephone does still work, so they do that. Text messages for storing information, they use Notion, which also helps them communicate. Asana for task management, Box to store information, Google Drive to store information, and SharePoint to store information. Mm -hmm. Now, um, so that might have just taken our entire podcast time listing all those, but how maddening is that as an individual trying to do your job day to day Yeah. Um, to deal with all those? So, and I think the same is true for us, you know, as individuals with our phone, right? There's so many things, but from a large corporate standpoint, I mean, you just got to shake your head. I mean, I saw your reaction, Stacey, just listing that. And I can imagine everyone listening, like, they're, I'm not making this up, right? This is fully yeah. true. I verified this three times to make sure I was right. Um, there was also an important report done in 2023 
done by Grammarly and the Harris Poll that showed poor communication is costing businesses in the U.S. $1.2 trillion annually. Oh, wow. Yeah. Now, given the example I just gave you, um, they probably hold a large percentage of that contribution to the ineffectiveness of that communication. Yeah. Because that's huge. Oh, yeah. That's very huge. And so, I, I've been... Yeah, I've been, you know, I kind of understand because like when we've been, you know, working as groups, you know, there's been times where messages have been miscommunicated or lost in the between because there's so many different apps being used. Yeah. And that's the hard part, right? Like if you're working on one project, that's exactly what's happening. Right. And, the, and as your business expands, it only gets worse. Right. As you introduce multiple variables, whether it's more systems, more people, more projects that gets more and more complicated. So that just grows over time. And that's something you don't want to grow because that's doesn't help you out. Right? right now it's kind of, and again, always it's a good time to relook at this stuff and you really should relook at it quarterly. I mean, it's the same thing you see out there in kind of F1 racing, right? Yeah. After every race and before every race, they analyze everything, right? Track performance, how the car is performing tires, weather, you should be doing the same with the tech products that you're using in your business, right? Right. I know uh, solopreneurs have different challenges because they're sometimes trying to piece together a bunch of free apps to make it work because they're trying to bootstrap what they're doing, yeah. right? Yeah. Corporations, sometimes, again, it's your IT department, it's your leadership, it's individual departments, but it really gets out of control fast. So that's something that you really should do, I would say, once a quarter to really analyze, but... Right. Um, you know, there's no reason it shouldn't be done once a year for sure. Right. So like the, the other part is that, you know, the first thing you want to look at, like, because the question is, how do we fix this? Right. Or what do we specifically look at? Yeah. The, the first area is your tech stack consolidation. Right. So when I talk about a tech stack, it's all think about all the tech products that you're using mm -hmm. to make your business go. Right. right. We listed a bunch of them earlier. Every business has their own kind of tech products they use. So you really need to look at this as a whole together. One important finding, too, there was a 2022 report from Gardner that showed only 42 percent of tech stack capabilities were fully leveraged. Mm -hmm. Right. So what this there they found of this, you know, it leads to obviously poor communication, which we talked about, which is going to hinder the employee's ability to effectively use and integrate these tools. Right. So look at that as a whole, look at your tech stack, first of all, and say, hey, just create a list, right? For each product, am I using all of the features that it has? And yeah. just to simply do a checkbox of yes or X for no, and list all of these out. Because if you think about it, you know, Stacy, if you're paying $1,000 a year for something and you were using 42% of it, mm -hmm. you might rethink that purchase. Right. Right. I mean, you oh, wouldn't yeah. buy, you know, you wouldn't, you wouldn't pay $100 in gas and only put 42% of that in your tank. Right? right. So it's the same thing in your business. And again, the smaller businesses, we know resources are further tightened. Mm -hmm. So smaller businesses need to think better about this. But Again, large corporations, you, you, that amount of money spent on resources just grows. So that's one thing to to look at. Um, you know, and the other part too is what things can be accomplished the same across different platforms. Because then you're going to see that, right? If you're using one plat, you know, platform one has capabilities that you're using to store products. Platform two, hey, we're just storing products there, right? Mm -hmm. Well, we could do that with platform one, right? So by listing them out, you start to get an idea of what capabilities are within each and what you are using and what you're not using for each of those. Right. That's so true. And, and you know, you don't really think about that. A lot of times, like, you know, you you need a certain type of technology and you go and you get it, but then you don't really, you know, I haven't really you've thought about writing down all every single one because if I did write down every single one and I really analyzed it you know I probably mm -hmm. would cut out quite a bit or at least a quarter of them yeah and and again holds true in business but also holds true in personal right mm -hmm. um again how many people use apple music and spotify and serious radio and 
you know, whatever, you could keep naming them, right? You're, you're using three or four different products to achieve the same thing. And I understand right. each of them have their advantages and disadvantages, but at the end of the day, it may work personally, but if you're running a business with other people involved, you right. probably want to rethink that strategy. Right. That's very true. That's very true. Yeah, I think, and another component too, when we're talking about, hey, I have all these things that do the same thing, right? Mm -hmm. um, subscription creep is really a silent killer, right? You talked about it earlier. How how in the world do I cancel these, right? Sometimes I don't know how, it takes forever. You know what, I just, I'll deal with it later, right? Right. Um, so this happens. I have a friend that runs his own business and he lost track of all the different subscriptions that he had. Mm -hmm. And he was spending over, and again, we're we're talking nickel and dime subscriptions combined here. We're not talking like a big CRM purchase, but right. he had over $900 a month in just random little subscriptions, you know, yeah. whether it's Canva for something, whether it's a pro version of something, $900. I think it was across maybe 30 different subscriptions or maybe more that he had. And he didn't even realize he was paying that much. Right. So again, as a small business owner, and I know it's easy in some of these platforms that do a lot of things, but don't do everything. I think, yeah. you know, I've worked with companies before um, that use Shopify, right? A great tool to promote online products, sell your business. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a lot of plugins that go into Shopify. So you can pay the base Shopify a subscription, but then all of your different add-ons really start to grow over time yeah and suddenly that 15 dollars a month is not really 15 dollars a month anymore right so i don't know if stacy if you've had experience with other your again friends other business owners that have experienced similar oh yeah well you know they they've had um they've done studies and they, they've talked about this and mo most of the times a lot of these companies they get you because they have you on automatic renew and you mm -hmm. forget that you're even purchasing it and, you know, a lot of people don't even pay attention when they have the receipt that comes in. They overlook it and they just they don't pay attention. And so many people are paying for stuff they don't need because of the automatic renews. Yeah, that's that's a great call out. And the auto renews. Right. Remember when you first clicked? Yeah, I'll do that. That sounds like a great tool. Mm -hmm. You usually got a reduced price. Yes. Right? Sometimes as much as 90 percent off. So when that auto subscription renewal hits. That's a big sticker shock sometimes. And like you said, if you don't remember you have it, then it adds up. You know, one of the tricks that I use, uh, I've used with other business owners too. And again, it's rather simple. But anytime you do one of those, you subscribe to something, right? You always get that initial receipt. Yes, yes I subscribe to 12 months of this, right? Mm -hmm. Now, if you're using the Google platform or Outlook or whatever it is for business, you could snooze that email. Mm -hmm. And recall it 11 months from now, right. right? So that it pops in your head. Oh, wait a minute. Yes, I forgot about that. Mm -hmm. That subscription's coming for renewal. I need to cancel it or I need to, um, you know, figure out if I want to keep it and how that's going to work, right? And make sure right. I have budget for that. So that's one little thing that businesses could do. And I know as a small business owner, things sometimes get, that that falls off your plate really easily. So. Right. That's something that'll take you two seconds to do. That's just a simple reminder um, to pop back in your mind to know how to handle it. The other thing too, and again, I think we've all experienced this, is that when you when you do that promo offer initially and it comes back in and now you're getting renewed at the full subscription price, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Always an opportunity to renegotiate that, right? Whether you click cancel and you know, I see you smiling. So <laughs> you can cancel and then right away you're offered 50% off, right? Right. Tomorrow you're offered 75% off. So yeah. you shouldn't really have to pay full price anymore, especially for a lot of these tech subscriptions, because they will offer you the next discount to get you back and keep you as a customer. So right. um, I'm famous and I don't want to say them here with a couple of groups that I consistently do that with, mm -hmm. um, where Again, they they want they want to keep your business, so they'll do that, and yeah. they're still they're still benefiting from it, um, even though it doesn't may not seem like it, but right. they're still making their money. So that's something too for businesses to think about. And again, talking about larger corporations, 
same thing applies, right? Sometimes you even have more bargaining power as a larger corporation because yeah. that contract is larger. So right. every time that it comes up for a renewal, take the opportunity to one, again, analyze it and audit it on your team. Is that still useful, right? Two, understand that that price is probably going up. Mm -hmm. um, and then three, understand, hey, let's try to renegotiate and see if we can get better terms for what we're doing. Right. Um, the, the important thing, too, is we know how valuable a lot of these tools are for us, right? And I work a lot in the AI space. So a lot of these are very valuable. So you got to treat, think of treating these subscriptions like investments, right? Mm -hmm. A great example is the pro version of chat GBT or Google Gemini, which is what I use, right? Mm -hmm. It's $20 a month for chat GBT pro. And if you're using it, you probably save $20 a month of your time within the first hour of your Monday. Right. So you have to think of your subscriptions that way um, as investments. And mm -hmm. if you're not getting a return on those investments. Well, what do you do? Right. Probably, probably time to get rid of it. So those mm -hmm. are some things that, uh, from a subscription audit and optimizations that companies can do. That's so true. And, and you know, I, I was thinking when you were saying all this, it's probably a good idea to keep like a spreadsheet too, you know, and, and try to, you know, keep track of everything you know, that you have. That way, you know how much money you're actually, you know, spending because it could, let's say if it's $60 for the month, you don't, you don't think about that. Oh, that's not too bad. But then, you know, 12 months go by, you know, and you spent, you know, 700 and change, you know, so it's like, yeah. it is, it, it does add up, you know, and if you have a, a multiple apps and multiple subscriptions, you know, you could be spending thousands of dollars, not even realizing it easily. Yeah, no, that's exactly it. It's like, a th again, a thousand dollars a month in subscriptions is $12,000 a year. Yeah. And for smaller business owners, maybe, maybe spending 2000 instead of 12000 and well, that's going to give you 10,000 in profit right there. Right. Right. Because that's money you're not spending that you did before. So th there's definitely ways to to look at this differently, like that investment standpoint. And you're right. You have to consider the price over time. Right. Right. Um, and that's how that's how they get you. Right. Mm -hmm. 9.99 a month. Sure. That sounds like great. I can afford 10 bucks a month. Right. Right. But I have 10 other subscriptions and that's over a course of a year. And yeah, you have to really consider those things. Yes, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. And, and, I, you know, you, you made a great point too, when you talk about Spotify and, and even WordPress and, and many of those are very popular. They're used frequently by, you know, tens of thousands of people for their websites. And, you know, you end up, you know, spending a lot of them are subscription, you know, because you need more than just the basics and it, it, it could add up a lot because, and then you're paying for hosting and you're paying for this and you're paying for that, you know, so it all adds up in the end. Yeah. And, and you're right about keeping a spreadsheet. I, ideally, that's the best way to do it is every time you add something, you add it to the spreadsheet and you look at those collective costs every single time you add something new. Um, but let's be honest, most of the world and most people can't keep up with that. I am a spreadsheet nerd. So <laughs> that's in my wheelhouse, but I understand I'm probably part of the 2% of the population that <laughs> enjoys that. But another way of doing that is just get your monthly credit card statement uh, or your account statement for your business and yeah. go through it with a highlighter and everything that's a subscription, just highlight it. Yeah. And that'll achieve similar results. Again, the best part, and again, my advice would be to highlight it and put it into a spreadsheet. Yeah. But, um, at least you'll have an indication on how much you're spending every month, which again, like you had pointed out wisely, Stacey, how, what's that cost over a year and how better would my business be without that, those additional expenses? Exactly. And I think a lot too, like, especially small business owners, even large, I would think too, when you're not, no, not so much large because they have accountants and bookkeepers doing it. But for the small business owner, you know, a lot of them, I guarantee you, they don't even check their credit card. They just pay the bill because that's another problem that they were talking about also is that a lot of people, they just pay the balance and they don't check and they don't see what's actually going on the card. And that could be a huge problem also, especially for a small business owner. Yeah, no, that's a great call out. The small business owners, again, even solopreneurs, right? Because mm -hmm. most of the, they're balancing their personal checkbooks too, right? So right. 
Yeah, you're right. They get in the mindset of, hey, my personal accounts, oh yeah, I got to pay the gas bill and the electric bill. And But you're right, from the business side, it's just, okay, paid, okay, paid, right? And mm-hmm. they don't look at that. So that's a great point too. They got to, you really got to look at it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And then was, you know, we, I've had this conversation with other um, professional CPAs and, you know, they've mentioned too, and especially with bookkeeping, you know, a lot of small startup businesses don't have a bookkeeper or a professional accountant taking care. They're doing it all. And that could be a big problem also, because when you're trying to do it all, that's where, where things fall through the cracks. And that's where, you know, mistakes are being made. And that could cost a small business owner thousands of dollars. And those thousands of dollars could mean, you know, life or death for some businesses. Yeah. And I had this conversation. I'm glad we had similar conversations. I had one with someone the other day, which, again, and a lot of small business owners, you know, they're kind of going, you know, week to week or month to month, right? Mm-hmm. And using your bookkeeping example, if you don't have that in place, suddenly at the end of the year, you realize, oh, wait, I never paid my taxes for the year, right? <laughs> so as a small business owner that suddenly hit with a $20,000 tax bill, yeah, um, and that money is not in the bank account, that's a problem. And oh, that's yeah. a lot of businesses. That's how things change for the worse. And that's how they go out of business. So yeah. things like that. So yeah, it's super important. And I think And again, there's technology pieces that can bridge that gap. So if you can't afford a full-time bookkeeper or full-time accountant, right, you can get partway there with tech and partway there with, you know, an actual service from them. Um, And and there's ways to piece it together that you can work for the works for your business and uh, for your budget and what your capabilities are. Because again, if you're not a good bookkeeper and not into tracking things, then you probably want to look to to outsource that a little bit. Oh yeah, and it's worth it because they, they will find the cracks and they will they will show you and it could you know you could end up saving a lot of money. You know the fourth quarter is supposed to be the most um, profitable and you know mm-hmm. if, if you're if it's not done right and you're not you're not and you're making these mistakes throughout the year it's not going to be the profitable one, you know, and, and you really want to make sure everything is done accordingly. So that way, when you do the fourth quarter comes on and you, and you're all these holidays are coming and you have, you know, you can do promotions and you can do a lot of things to make money for your business. You're not making mistakes and causing yourself just to either just get through the, just make a balance, you know, and, and, and not really profiting from it and, or just losing money. Yeah, no. And again, that's sometimes, you know, most businesses, 80% of their profit might be during the holidays, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and but what I would want to say is that, again, there's never going to be an ideal time to do something like this, right? Mm-hmm. This is one of the things when you put all the priorities of your day to day in, probably one of those things that keeps getting pushed off. Right? Yeah. But to your point, right, if these inefficiencies exist during the busy season, it's going to result in missed sales, poor customer experience, right? Mm -hmm. Those errors are going to cost you and they're going to cost you in the long term more than the short term. And you don't, you won't realize that right away, but it will in the long run. And for companies that get quiet this time of year, right? Great time to do it. Mm -hmm. But you know, like I said, when we opened, it should be something you're doing every quarter. So yeah. I know businesses ebbs and flow. And you you have to make time for this because it's just going to it's going to save you money and make you money at the same time. Well, I know like for the for the big com- corporations and the, for the large companies, they they do it monthly every month at the end of the of the uh, of the month. They are doing their audits and they are making sure everything is in alignment with their numbers. Yeah. Yeah, it should be common practice, but unfortunately, it's not. (laughs) (laughs) Um, That leads us into kind of uh, the next part of the same process, right? Now that you've looked at what you have, understand what you're using and not using. Yeah. You've renegotiated a few terms, right? Now's a great time, too, to figure out how does how do we streamline communication through our business? Yeah. And even small businesses, again, if they're working on three or four different platforms, it becomes a problem, right? If there's different components done in the sales process and manufacturing process and marketing process, if they're on different platforms, again, you're getting missed. So yeah. now that you've taken the opportunity to figure out what's best for you, and we didn't talk about it, it could be a whole other conversation, but sometimes one large 
purchase is better than a bunch of little purchases. So yeah. um, with that in mind, you know, building c communication is like really, you know, if you think about it back in the day, a horse and buggy or kind of like a coal power train, yeah. right? Slow, loud, clunky. Um, streamlining your communication really gets you in time to like that high speed, high speed rail. Right? Yeah. It gets you very fast. It allows you to make decisions better because you have all the information in mm -hmm. one place. Right. Um, you don't have to go searching for it because, again, you might miss it somewhere because it's siloed in some other platform. Right. right. So that communication streamlining is going to help you make better decisions. It's also going to help foster better collaboration because yeah. if different components of your business can see and participate in those conversations that are going on. Mm hmm they're going to notify gaps ahead of time where you may not see it. Um, right. So again, essential in both small business, because again, your resources are limited and every dollar wasted is magnified. Yeah. And then also essential in large businesses because the, you know, different reasons it's magnified because more people are touching the same thing and right. mistakes can sometimes be extremely costly uh, when you're talking billions of dollars. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. 10% mistake when you're dealing with a billion dollars is still a huge sum of money, right? Oh, yeah. Um, so the, the, this is the opportunity. So from a leadership perspective, right, you need you need to maybe reestablish what those protocols are, are and be clear about it, right? You have right. the right tools. This is how communication goes. We no longer want things done on text and, you know, Slack and stuff like that, right? Like, here's right. what we're doing. We're going to put it in our project management system. We're going to comment, attach files. Everything will be stored there so that yes. it's all together. Great. That's what we're doing. And move forward with, with that process. So make sure you have that documented, communicated, and shared. And, and what that also does, too, is it really creates that culture of open communication, right? There, you, There's no longer things hiding in certain places where, hey, maybe just the marketing team talks about it there and they go through the process of like, here's the good, here's the bad. Maybe a little venting goes on here mm -hmm. and there, you know, it, it brings it back to where everybody's a part of it again. So right. groups don't feel separated from the company. You can build better unity that way. Um, and again, it's the same line. It's the same thing. If you think about, again, you know, I'm a sports guy. Mm -hmm. um, so if you think about you have a sports team and the coaches only talk to each other, the players only talk to each other, the <laughs> medical staff only talks to each other, what's going to happen, right? Yes. Nothing's going to get done. It's right. a terrible approach. So that same thing is going on in most organizations today. Yes, it They're is. just not addressing it. So think about that when you go, when you listen to our chat here, think about your company as a sports team. Is everybody talking to each other? Yes. Um, and again, no time of year is a great time of year, but yeah, any time of year is is when you should be doing this. So, um, and again, I'd love to hear your thoughts on that too, Stacey. I know with all the guests that you've had and mm -hmm. people you interact with, I'm sure you've heard a lot of stories too. Oh yeah, and you know, one story is that I I just went to um, a a place where we and each department was in their own little group, and they all knew each other very well. They're working together, and the problem was is that they were not communicating with the customers. They were so involved within their departments that they were not really paying attention to the customers' needs. So the customers were being neglected. And they were getting very upset because, you know, there wasn't any communication within the departments. It was just working within my department. Okay, here are the responsibilities. This is what we have to get done. You know, they all knew each other, friendly, friendly, but nobody's intertwining and they're not having company meetings, you know, maybe in the morning or, you know, a weekly meeting and the customers were not getting what they asked for. And at the end, you know, a lot of these customers, you know, left and said, I'll never do business with them again. You know, so they ended oh. up not, you know, losing repeat customers because they were not communicating within the other departments. They were just staying within their own cluster of people. And that was it. Yeah. And, and it's like, I just shake my head. Right. Because those are things that are easily preventable. Yeah. Um, and things that should be, you know, standard practice. But and again, you, that company is not alone, right? Like you and I have right. probably dealt with hundreds of companies that have the same problem. 
And most of them don't realize they lose the customer because they don't have that, even that awareness that they are just talking to each other. The customer disappears and they never notice. Right. And then they wonder, you know, a quarter from now, why is our revenue down 50%? Yeah. Right. And exactly. there's, there's usually reasons you can point to as to, to why that's happened. Yeah. And it happens so, so often. And, and, you know, and a lot of times, you know, what I found too, is that the high management doesn't even realize a lot of these things are going on, you know, and, uh, and they don't really know what the problem is. The problem is not being addressed. And the, 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 the man on top of the line at the end, he's responsible. He gets, he gets hurt. You know, he, you know, many of them have lost their jobs. I've known so many CEOs that have lost their jobs because they lost so much revenue, but then they did not take the time to f figure out what was going on in each department or have meetings with the managers of each department so they could have a communication and they can see how everything was running and if everything was running accordingly to protocol and if it was being delegated properly. So I've seen many, many companies, you know, go downhill that way also. Yeah. And it's surprising, right? Coming from the backgrounds that we come from, right? And I do the same with my clients, right? Mm -hmm. Go in and take that look. And again, leadership has never had a conversation with the person that's actually doing the job. Right. And th those are, again, when you take, and again, I get it. It's hard when you're in the day to day, right? Because you're so focused on the three or four things that you're tasked to do mm -hmm. that not many people are thinking of the big picture, right? Right. And this tech example is just one little example. And you just illustrated where there's other components of this going on. And that's why that communication is important so that you're flushing these things out and understanding these as they happen in real time. And uh, you made a, uh, an interesting comment about meetings, right? Having that morning meeting. And a lot of times you need that alignment because that's the only time that cross communication happens yeah. is in those meetings. But could you imagine a world where the business had a great communication process and tech stack where these conversations went on in real time and you could look at, you know, whether it's a customer order right. and all of the interactions from everyone that's been a part of it as to what's going on. And it just, it really helps things. And, I, and again, I know how hard it is dealing with the day to day, right? You're dealing with so many things other than business at times, but yeah. These are the things that can really make or break a business and really make or break, you know, even even employees get frustrated at these yeah. miscommunications. So when you think about even retaining employees and employee turnover, which we all know is extremely costly as well. Right. It, this all plays a part of it. Right. If they feel attached to the organization, if the um, operations of the day to day seem smooth, then you get more out of them and they get more out of you know, what they do as well. So right. th these things may seem very isolated and in, in theory, but they affect so many different things of and so many aspects of the business. It's, you know, I, I, what's your feeling about, you know, there are, there are softwares that I even use there. They're on more on the expensive side, but they have everything that you could imagine within the software itself. So yes, you're paying more money for it, but you're not having like 20 different apps or, you know, 30 different apps. You're, you know, everything is in one specific software and all you have to do is just touch a button and you're in the next category. You know, that you could do CRM in one, you could do funnels in the next, you can keep track of all your, your, your people on your mailing list in the next one. And the list goes on. And sometimes, you know, people, they see a number and they get scared because they don't want to spend the money, but you know, they're not looking at, you know, 60, 90, 40, 30, 20. Mm -hmm. And by, by the end of the day, if you, if you calculate everything, you're probably spending more for those cheap apps than you are for the more expensive software. Yeah, no, you're exactly right. And I can tell you almost every business I end up going into, that's the conversation that happens at the end. If it's a large project where we're looking at things top to bottom, that's typically where we go. And I, partner with a digital transformation organization because I don't make specific tools, right? I go in and audit the process and look at where things could be improved. Right. And that you're exactly right, right? It's a big price tag sometimes to get a big fancy CRM in there. Mm -hmm. um, 
but again, everything's in one, right? It, right. it can even if you can then get to a level of understanding where for every product I sold, I know exactly what it cost me from a parts perspective, material mm -hmm. perspective, and even from a people perspective, right? right? I had 10 people put that product together and they cost me X. Mm -hmm. So you can really start to understand metrics that you wouldn't get to if you were plug you know the usual example of plugging and playing 20 different solutions into one yeah uh, and th again that's really powerful for a business because you can make those informed decisions along the way hey we're losing money where are we losing money right what right. products are actually best for us like yeah sure we sell that one at a hundred dollars but it costs us 75 to make it mm -hmm. um this other product that we're selling for 50 costs us five dollars right so which one would I want to make more of, yeah. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. um, the, and again, that's where kind of taking that step back and looking at things holistically comes into play. Yeah. Um, sometimes you do, have, again, and that's why we said it's got, you got to look at these as investments. So right. if you can plug that big platform in that does everything under one umbrella, right? Um, how much are, how much value are you really going to get out of that? And that'll help make your decision on on what to do. Yes, definitely. Definitely. Now, when, when you look at all these different things, you know, if you really had to sum up the whole conversation, what are some of the things that you think you would like to emphasize that are really important for startups and corporations to understand and learn? Yeah. The first thing is always to connect the dots, right? You have to understand one, how do we streamline these things into making them effective but then two, how does that empower the team? So who, what what dot does plugging this in connect to, right? And how can I bring that back to the customer? Um, so it's understanding that journey of putting things together. Right. And I think you made a great point too that we didn't talk about, about sometimes purchasing a larger system is you got to think about growth strategies, mm -hmm. right? If you're continuing to add on little things more and more, that's not going to be good when you scale and grow. Right. right. So there is a time, yes, where you're just kind of bootstrapping, using free programs. But once you're really ready to scale and grow, you need to have that alignment. And sometimes that that bigger system will let you grow with it instead of, you know, and a lot of businesses deal with this. Right. I have a CRM and I have 500 customers. I don't want to change. Right. It's too right. much work. Mm -hmm. But when you get to thousand customers, that CRM you have today is pretty well useless. Yeah. Right. So what's the cost of you then trying to get um, 500 customers switched over and 500 new customers into a system? It's more complex, right? right. So um, you got to connect the dots and how it interfaces with everything. And you have to consider growth yeah. um, because you want to grow with your tech. You don't want to grow out of your tech. Right. And sometimes it's worth just, you know, if, if you don't want to do the work of switching over, just paying somebody to switch over for you in the long run will be more beneficial too. So, you know, spending a little extra money just to have someone, you know, take everything from one piece of software and put it into this new, new system is well worth it. Yeah, absolutely. Your time is a valuable resource too. So you gotta, you have to put a monetary value on that sometimes. And you're right. Finding an expert that can, do it in an hour versus you arrive trying to figure it out on our own and stumbling through it for a month yeah. is probably a better use of our time and probably a good use of our of our money. Exactly. A hundred percent. Now can you tell people about the services that you provide? Yeah, I again I work in the consulting space. So I work as a fractional COO or a strategic advisor. So that fractional COO role will be a little bit of what we did here is just looking at your entire business as a whole, understanding mm -hmm. the processes that go through. And again, a lot of companies don't have these things mapped out. You'd be surprised. Even companies that are 20 years old uh, don't have their process mapped out for things. So um, take a look at that from start to finish, map it out, and then build towards your goals, right? If we're trying to scale, work that way. Um, and I always like to follow, we talked about it before in one of the previous episodes, exponential scaling versus linear scaling. So yeah. I work with companies to help set them up to um, establish that type of growth in what they do, make sure that they can scale and grow exponentially. But again, and uh, you know, you can have your cake and eat it too. So you can grow your business 
and you can spend less time in, on your business too. And uh, that's where I come in uh, to help you kind of navigate that landscape. Right. And, and, you know, it's, it's, it's really, people don't realize that you can make a couple of small tweaks and it could be a, a game changer in, and completely, you know, time-wise, money-wise, energy, you know, it's just, uh, you know, all you need to do is just make certain tweaks in certain areas. And a lot of times you need that consultant to come in because you can't see it yourself. And then I, I find many, many people who own businesses sometimes are stuck in the old ways and they don't really you know, they haven't really tapped into some of the new ways of, of doing things, which could be a game changer in itself. Yeah, no, that's spot on. I mean, it's one of those things, if you think about it as a business owner, right? And I'm going to be very conservative in numbers that I throw out right now. But if you're if you're a million dollar business, right, and you brought a consultant in like myself, uh, there have been no situations where I haven't been able to save you 10% and make you 10% more. Mm -hmm. So, and like you said, Stacey, sometimes there are little tweaks, but when you're in the day to day, you can't really see the forest from the trees, right? right? So you need someone with that bigger perspective to come in and really look at things. So if you if you think of instantly saving 20% on your business today, right? That million dollar business, what's that? $200,000. Yeah. And just by making a few tweaks and uh, again, I'm probably not charging $200,000 for a million dollar mm -hmm. business, but as a business owner, what could you do with that $200,000 or 20% more of whatever your business is bringing home today? Right. That would probably really change the financial situation for a lot of companies. Oh, a hundred percent. Definitely. Definitely. Now, if people needed to find you, where could they find you? Yeah, I have the common name, so you won't be able to really Google it. But if you go to adamsconsultingfirm.com, um, that's my website there. Uh, all the link to email me, uh, schedule a free consultation can be done on there. It can be found on LinkedIn, too. Again, a little harder to find. But if you look up Adams Consulting Firm, you should be able to connect with me. And th those are the two easiest ways to to get in touch with me. And again, Happy to do a free consultation to discuss what your needs are and what you're looking to do and, and see if I can help. And again, I'm always from the mindset too, if I can't help, if it's something outside of, of what I do, happy to refer you to someone that I have partnered with that I trust that can help you kind of solve that problem or get to the next stage of business. I love it. You know, it's so th this is such an important concept. And I, I'm glad you brought it up today, especially, you know, because, you know, so, this is, you know, so many different apps, so many different things now available. And every day there's more and more and more things is really, you know, people really need to take a little bit of time to really look at what they're buying, what they're purchasing and how much they really are spending because most people their eyes will bulge out if they if they when they realize how much they're spending on stuff they don't even need. Yeah, I can still see the picture of my friend's face when he realized he was spending $900 a month on subscriptions. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I didn't see his wife's face when she found out. So you I'm might sure not have told her. <laughs> yeah, well, he did, but he I, did, huh. he did, but I, I didn't see her face and I'm sure it would have been worse. <laughs> that's funny <laughs> well scott today has been amazing thank you so much for coming on the show and i thank you so much for you this is a great topic and it's definitely something that needs to be brought up more often because you don't hear a lot of people talking about it but it's so prevalent in every business absolutely thank you for having the conversation stacy it's been a pleasure uh same here you have a great day bye now you too bye bye